Good evening. I just need your quick attention. I have a few important security and safety considerations to share with you before the service begins. In the event of an emergency evacuation, there are four exits from the sanctuary. Please look in all directions to find the emergency exit that is closest to your seat. Through the door to your left at the front of the sanctuary, this leads up a few stairs to an emergency only exit at Mount Vernon Street. Through the doors in the center of the sanctuary on your left directly to Mount Vernon Street. Through the door you likely entered on your right, which will lead you back to Green Street or through the courtyard and then out to Green Street. At the rear of the sanctuary, in the original Tallheimer lobby, you can use the center emergency exit doors directly to Broad Street. If someone is experiencing a heart event, there are two automated external defibrillators, often referred to as AEDs. These are located at the security desk in the main Levitt Gershman lobby and on your left and forward near this Mount Vernon Street exit. For your safety and peace of mind, the far left sections of the sanctuary closest to Mount Vernon Street are for those who choose to wear and sit among other mask wearers. For any accommodations, large print prayer books, assistive hearing devices, a quiet room, or more, please check in at the respectability table in the lobby. Thank you for your attention. Lashana Tovar, Tova, Gamar Khatima Tova. May you be inscribed in the Book of Life. And the service will begin in just a few minutes. Good Yantif, Shana Tova, welcome. Welcome to congregants, to friends, to guests, to those here in the sanctuary and those joining us online as we gather together tonight for Kol Nidre. We welcome to the BIMA tonight our board of director members, Fran Martin and Monica Kramer, and our congregational president, Hank Bernstein. Thank you for partnering with us. 
We extend thanks to our musical team, including our new organist, Andrew Monath, our accompanist, Nathaniel Hawk, and our professional octet, sponsored by the Roberta Lee and D. Arthur Magaziner Memorial Music Fund. Our Road of Shalom beekeeper, yes, we do have a Road of Shalom beekeeper, our Road of Shalom beekeeper who cares for our holy honey, which is right above us, our hives, on the roof of RS, is often called into unusual places to safely and humanely remove bee hives, infestations. He recently told me about a homeowner who noticed some buzzing in their house. They then saw some sweet, sticky liquid coming out of some of their outlets. Well, the beekeeper very quickly discovered that there was a whole hive of honeybees inside of her walls. Do you ever hear that buzz inside your soul? That still small voice? What are the walls that we need to tear down to get to that sweet honey? Kol Nidre tonight is meant to crack us open, to break down the barriers that we put up to try to appear strong. It's a time for inward turning, to shuva, to listen to that buzz of our soul, to ensure that we are praying together as one community tonight. Take a moment for those online, please introduce yourself in the comments or the chat. And if you're here in the sanctuary, please introduce yourself to someone you don't know. We welcome to the Bema tonight, Vicki Clark Kadish, her husband Andrew Kadish, and their kids Rachel and Jacob to lead us in our candle lighting, page nine.
Please rise. God, my creator and guide, as I seek purity of soul on this holiest of days, I contemplate your gifts of love and forgiveness. May I be worthy of grace, kindness, and mercy in your eyes and in the eyes of all human beings. I hereby forgive all who have broken faith by harming me physically or materially or by using thoughtless, unethical, and malicious speech. Let no one be punished because of me. As I forgive those who have hurt me, so let others view me with favor and forgiveness. God, my creator and guide, on this day of atonement, let my intentional acts make me attentive to repentance and forgiveness, to the potential of my soul, and to the holy purpose of my life. We invite our past presidents, Tom Perloff and Richard Schmelzer, and our congregational leaders, Monica Kramer, Fran Martin, and Cassidy Layton, to join our president, Hank Bernstein, at the Ark, page 16. Thank mm -hmm. With one voice, assembled sages, past and present, declare, all may pray as one on this night of repentance. Let none be excluded from our community of prayer. With one voice, God and congregation proclaim, all may pray as one on this day of return. Let all find a place in this sacred assembly. Page 18.
the middle of page 20. Moses prayed to God, as you have been faithful to this people ever since Egypt, please forgive their failings now in keeping with your boundless love. And God responded, I forgive as you have asked. Page 25. Day and night are yours, creative spirit of the universe, the muted colors of twilight, the radiance of dawn. Yours are the spreading wings of light, the deepening shadows of darkness, an ever-changing drama. In the human heart, too, the struggle between darkness and light unfolds. From sunlit heights of generosity, the human heart sinks to the gloomy depths of selfishness. Although we fall, you give us the strength to rise again. You call on those who hurt through word or deed to break free from wrongdoing and return to you. All who hear your call to goodness are embraced. All who reject emptiness and evil find acceptance from you. We come into your presence this night of Kol Nidre aware that our shortcomings and weaknesses are many, yet encouraged by your promise of forgiveness, we choose freely the path of repentance, restoring wholeness to our lives and holiness to the world. Baruch Ata Adonai Hama'ariv Aravim, page 28. Shame. Please be seated. We continue together on page 30. You shall love Adonai your God with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Set these words which I command you this day upon your heart. Teach them faithfully to your children. Speak of them in your home and on your way, when you lie down and when you rise up. Bind them as a sign upon your hand. Let them be a symbol before your eyes. Inscribe them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates, page 32. Be mindful of all my mitzvot and do them. Thus you will become holy to your God. I, Adonai, am your God, 
who brought you out of Egypt to be your God. I, Adonai, your God. Page 40. Continue on pages 46 and following. Please rise. Adonai, sefatai tiftach ofia, gid tehilatecha. Adonai, open up my lips that my mouth may declare.
Please be seated. Page 62. In your love, eternal our God, you have given us this Yom Kippur, a day on which our wrongs are forgiven with love, a day of sacred assembly, a day to be mindful of your peoples going out from Egypt. Our God and God of the generations before us, may a memory of us ascend and come before you, may it be heard and seen by you, winning your favor and reaching your awareness, together with the memory of our ancestors, the memory of your sacred city, Jerusalem, and the memory of your people, the family Israel. May we be remembered for safety, well-being, and favor, for love and compassion, for life and peace on this day of atonement. Page 64. Eternal our God, remember us. Amen. Amen. Be mindful of us. Amen. And redeem us for a life of goodness and blessing. Amen. Favor us with words of deliverance and mercy. Show us the depth of your care. God, we await your redemption for your reign, for you reign with grace and compassion. Page 79. Together on the top of the page. Grant us peace, your most precious gift, O eternal source of peace and give us the will to proclaim its message to all the peoples of the earth. Bless our country, that it may always be a stronghold of peace and its advocate among the nations. May contentment reign within its borders, health and happiness within its homes. Strengthen the bonds of friendship among the inhabitants of all lands. And may the love of your name hallow every home and every heart. Inscribe us in the book of life blessing and peace. We praise you, O oh God, the source of peace. Sefer Chaim Beracha V'Shalom Beracha 
moments now for silent prayer. Year after year, the same patterns can trap us, yet there is always hope for Teshuva. The path to atonement is not insurmountable. The story is told, 
a ruler had a child who had gone astray on a journey of 100 days. The child's friends said, return to your parent. The child said, I cannot. It's too high of a mountain to climb. Then the ruler sent a message to the child saying, return as far as you can and I will come the rest of the way for you. As we enter this vidui, this confession, hear God say, return to me and I will return to you. And if you aren't sure what you believe about God, and if you aren't, you're in good company, then just hear justice or community or the right path or your better self say, return to me and I will return to you. Page 82, please rise. Eloheinu, velohe avoteinu vimoteinu, tavo lefanecha, tefilateinu, ve'al titana. Together, our God and God of all generations, may our prayers reach your presence. And when we turn to you, do not be indifferent. Adonai, we are arrogant and stubborn, claiming to be blameless and free of sin. In truth, we have stumbled and strayed. We have done wrong. Ay, 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 ay.
Please be seated. Al chet shechatanu lefanecha. Together, we wrong you when we wrong ourselves. For our failures of integrity, Adonai, we seek forgiveness. For passing judgment without knowledge of the facts, and for distorting facts to suit our purposes. For succumbing in silence to social pressure, and for acquiescing in beliefs we find offensive. For using others' bad behavior to excuse our own, and for blaming others for our mistakes and poor decisions, for pretending to emotions we do not feel, and for appearing to be other than what we are, for condemning in our children the faults we tolerate in ourselves, and for tolerating in ourselves the faults we condemn in our parents. Al chet shechatanu lefanecha. Together, we dishonor you when we dishonor our society. For failures of justice, Adonai, we seek forgiveness. For being indifferent to deprivation and hunger while accepting a culture of self-indulgence and greed. For abuse of power in boardrooms, courtrooms, and classrooms. And for accepting the neglect of children and elders, the ill and the weak. For permitting social inequalities to prevail. And for lacking the vision to transcend our selfishness for glorifying violence and turning hastily to war, and for allowing history to repeat itself, for behaviors that risk the future of our planet, and for wreaking havoc on our only true inheritance, God's creation. Page 91. Al chet shechatanu lefanecha. Together, we sin against you when we hurt one another. For our failures of love, Adonai, we seek forgiveness. For exploiting another for our own pleasure and for the wounds we cause through betrayal and deception. For withholding affection from those we claim to love and for using love to control our spouses and partners, our children and parents. For abandoning friends and siblings whose love has sustained us and for neglecting those who love us when they need us most for harboring in our relationships mistrust, boredom, and disloyalty, and for rejecting our partner's efforts at repair and renewal, for possessiveness, jealousy, and avarice, and for lashing out in anger at those who are closest to us. At the bottom of the page. Continue with silent confession through page 98.
Turning to page 114, please rise. Avinu Malkenu, show us the way to a year of goodness. Renew our belief that the world can be better. Restore our faith in life. Restore our faith in you. Avinu Malkeinu Shema Koleinu Avinu Malkeinu Ha 
Avinu Malkeinu Please be seated. Good Yantif. This summer, when Philadelphia welcomed the Dear Evan Hansen tour, I was struck by the enduring human question the musical poses. How can we feel understood? The show about a lonely teenaged boy with social anxiety who feels unnoticed puts it this way, quote, have you ever felt like you could disappear? There's a place where we don't have to feel unknown, Evan Hansen sings. My sense is that Evan speaks not only for those who struggle with mental health, but for everyone. The plague of loneliness the potential for invisibility. I am convinced these bind us. The distance between us, amplified in the thick of the pandemic isolation, has not magically lifted and, candidly, was with us already all along. Struck by the ways many of us in the congregation and in the world are feeling separate. I feel compelled to explore what it is that widens or narrows the distance. And on this Kol Nidre, this night of promises to rededicate ourselves to this place, 
where we yearn for our souls to be known. Our Torah tells the story of Hagar, a slave of low status and little agency, a surrogate for Abraham and Sarah. Once pregnant, Hagar is afflicted by them and flees to the wilderness. There, Hagar cries out to God by the name God who sees, El Roi. And that spot where Hagar stands is called Be'er Lechai Roi, a place of being seen. Of course, it is not about technical sight, but about perceiving another's truth. Bound up in her name for God, El Roi, she is both. Her de it's desperate in her longing to be seen by God and her faith in God. This woman who was potentially overlooked, Hagar, discovers a God who sees, who does not overlook. When Hagar's heart is cracked open, she understands not only who God is, but who we ought to be. For bound up in our lives is our longing to be seen and our faith that it is possible, possible to share something of our essence, possible to realize our presence matters. It is Hagar, this marginalized, non-Israelite woman who teaches us to seek out a space where we can be known. Here in our congregation, we, emulating God, witness each other's truths. Here, knowing nothing and no one ever stays the same, we nurture and challenge each other's growth as we stretch into new phases of our journeys, our journeys of spirituality, Torah learning, justice work, of participation in congregational life, of profound connections. To know each other is godly, holy. To witness each other makes this our Be'er L'chai Ro'i, our place of being seen. This year, our Rod of Shalom Widows Connection Group published a book called Struggling Well, Thanks for Asking, Widows Sharing Their Stories to Help Comfort and Embrace Your Journey. I learn so much from the ways they witness each other as they stretch into new experiences. One author writes about feeling like a stranger in settings where she previously felt at home. Quote, newly bereaved, dining out with friends, I endured a mortifying discussion by a trio of husbands who debated how to split four credit cards seven ways. I learned to bring cash. Another author writes of isolation and hope. I was lost. Although my children are wonderful and my friends always include me, I felt like overnight I went from a strong, competent woman to a shell of a person. I joined a widow's group at the synagogue. How wonderful to be surrounded by women who understood how I felt without explanation to find a group of compassionate, strong, understanding women who became my friends. These women gave me the strength to grieve, to take one day at a time, to undergo major surgery alone, to face my life. Widowhood often invisible. In this bond, they are profoundly seen. Hagar from our Torah teaches us to look out for the potentially 
overlooked. There can be a pressure in our society to reveal only what fits into a neat box of accepted norms. Fit well enough, and you are celebrated. Yet so many of us carry truths that do not fit. Indeed, I think the box contains only a few people. But when left out of it, how easy it is to waste our energy ensuring no one finds out we do not fit. Keeping those parts of us secret builds a wall, a closet, a barrier of fear that separates us one from another. In our congregational striving to be that place where you don't have to be unknown, where we do not overlook, we seek to explicitly see people who might feel separated from community. That's why our lobby welcome banner does not just say, all are welcome. Thanks to our DEI, our diversity, equity, inclusion group called AID, in Hebrew meaning witness, the banner reads, whether you are black, brown, white, Latinx, Asian, indigenous, or multiracial, queer, gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, questioning, or straight, three days old, 30 years old, 103 years old, single, married, with or without kids, divorced, widowed, or partnered, living in Philadelphia, the suburbs, or elsewhere, struggling with addiction, a student looking for a job, or gainfully employed, disabled, able-bodied, or a person of differing abilities, neurodiverse or neurotypical, new to Judaism, or a lifelong member seeking your path, you belong here at Rodef Shalom. This collection, developing as we continue to learn, names the very identities and experiences of those who potentially feel left out because of the stigma they already face in our society or the challenge their circumstance already brings that the distance of stigma can just make all the more challenging. Anyone's marginalized identity can be treated as unseen. I've experienced myself and listened to many of you about the distance fueled by stigma, the barriers to witness we experience around mental illness, gender expansiveness, infertility, body size, job loss, abortion, divorce. We draw closer to each other when we witness one another's truth. This wisdom lies right at the core of our tradition. It's the very Torah. The story is told of a preschool class. Picture our Burger Early Learning Center a preschool class that is on a tour of the sanctuary, but runs out of time before they can learn about the bima. On their way back to class, their teacher asks the preschoolers when they return for part two of the sanctuary tour, what do they think they will see when the doors of the ark open? Well, a lively discussion among the children ensues. One student guesses a big closet of candy. <laughs> Another student, perhaps a budding cynic, wonders if the ark will be empty. Perhaps coming closest to the answer, the third student guesses that when the rabbi opens the ark, there will be a big mirror. Yes, a mirror. In Torah, we see ourselves and we see each other. At the center of our community is the source that helps us all be known. 
Jews who have become B'nai Mitzvah will refer to the Torah portion they chanted as my Torah portion. Indeed, tradition teaches we each have a letter of the Torah that is our own. One part of the Torah precisely reflects you. In Sarah's laughter, your laughter. In Rachel's heartbreak, your heartbreak. In Moses' humility, your humility. In Miriam's wounds, your wounds. In Isaiah's justice, your justice. Your courage, your perseverance, your memories, your ancestors, your aspirations. Every letter of the Torah is indispensable. Every soul of infinite value. As one missing letter from Torah renders a scroll unfit, one missing soul makes us incomplete as a community. We need each other for this story, this community, to be whole. Earlier tonight, the doors of the ark opened and we lingered on the scrolls. Just after our High Holy Days, on the festival of Simchat Torah, when we complete the reading of Torah and then start from Genesis once again, we will dance with the Sifre Torah and unscroll them to see its text in its entirety, the mirror in its fullness. Cantor Hyman, ensuring we hold it up wearing special gloves to protect the precious parchment of these scrolls we inherit from past generations. Rabbi Friedman walking beside the scroll into a circle and at each portion, teaching us what happens at that point of the scroll, at least a summary in his five-minute whole Torah review, inspiring us to become more intimately aware of the stories of our scrolls and the stories in our scrolls, each other's letters and each other's stories. For every one of your letters, your stories is needed, cherished in this community. On this holy day, it fills my soul to be present with the fullness of our congregation. Still yet, our Torah is not complete, for we are not complete. For decades, population studies have revealed a great number of Jews and seekers who are curious or even passionate about Jewish life, yet absent from Jewish community. Tomorrow morning, we will read from Torah. You stand here this day, Atem Nitzavim, all of you, in the presence of the Eternal, your God, to enter into the covenant, and not with you alone do I make this covenant, but with each of you who stands here among us this day, and with each one who is not here among us this day. Although some Jewish institutions lament the outward drift of affiliation, the leaders of our reform movement suggest instead that we see our demographic reality for what it has the potential to be, a time of transition during which the next phase of sacred Jewish congregational living unfolds on the cusp of what is next for the Jewish community. It is time for our congregation to broaden our gaze that we may more deeply understand those outside our walls, to reach out, to convene Philadelphia-wide conversations about our lives and what matters to us most, that others may also sense the community is a be'er l'chai ro'i, a place where we are seen not so that we can welcome them into what we have created, but so that we can listen to their truths, learn new ways people can be in relationship with Jewish community. 
that they can help shape a Jewish future for us all. If Rodef Shalom is the center of Jewish life in Philadelphia, we take on that mantle not as an award, but as a responsibility, a responsibility to our congregation and also a responsibility to nothing less than the future of the Jewish people. That's you. For on Yom Kippur, in the presence of the eternal our God, we enter into the covenant. And God makes this covenant not with us alone, but each one of us here today and each one who is not here today. We long to ensure the covenant embraces us all. When Hagar's heart is cracked open, she understands not only who God is, but who we ought to be. It is this marginalized woman who teaches the Jewish people the profound truth about being known to one another. On this Kol Nidre, this night of promises, may we renew our dedication in our return to this place where we yearn for our souls to be known. May we cherish this sacred community, this Be'er L'chai Ro'i, a place of being seen. Amen. Have you ever felt like nobody was there? Have you ever felt forgotten in the middle of nowhere? Have you ever felt like you could disappear? Like you could fall and no one would hear? So let that lonely feeling wash away Cause maybe there's a reason to believe you'll be okay Cause when you don't feel strong enough to stand You can reach reach out your hand And oh someone will come running and I know They'll take you home Even when the dark comes crashing through When you need a friend to carry you And when you're broken on the ground You will be found So let the sun come shining in Cause you'll reach up and you'll face again Lift your heart and look around will be found, you will be found, you will be found, you will be found, you will be found. Turning now in our prayer books to the top of page 117, followed by 118, we continue with Alenu. Please rise. Alenu. 
לשבח לאדון הכל, לתת גדולה להיות סב ראשית, שהוא נוטה שמיים ויוסד ארץ, ומושב יקרו בשמיים ממעל. ושכינת עוזור בגובהי מרומים, ואלוהינו אין עוד. ואנחנו קוראים ומשתחווים ומודים לפני מלך מלכי הקדוש ברוך הוא. ונאמר והיה אדוני למלך על כל הארץ ביום ההוא, ביום ההוא יהיה אדוני אחד. Please be seated. We stand as one on this night of remembrance, united in grief, united in loss, united in the power of a promise. God has made us. God will sustain us. We give praise to this life and rise up together to renew our strength. As we enter moments of memorial, We remember those whose yard site the anniversary of their death falls this week. Helen C. Bacharach, Mina Bacharach, Estelle Bandler, Sophie K. Batt, J. B. Benneman, Harry Bishow, Philip J. Blankensy, Rose Wolf Block, Florence W. Blumenthal, Ronald Boyesk, Sidney Broder, Stanley Irving Brood, Sarah Carmosen, Linda P. Charleston, Abraham Chorney, Stanley Chorney, Joseph Chudnoff, Albert M. Cohen, Celia Cohen, Herman Allen Costo, Julie H. S. Daniel, Abraham Diamond, Maddie Jurassi, Minnie Edelman, Beatrice Ehrlich, Retta Eisenberg, Samuel Jonah Elman, Sophie Edelson, Ruth Feld, Eugene S. Felderman, David N. Feldman, Melvin Finn, Keith Fish, Alfred B. Fishman, Adla R. Friedberg, Morris Fuchs, Adam Gershon, Ann Gold, Harold L. Goldberg, Elizabeth Greenberg, Maurice Gross, Paul J. Gutman, Irma Hallow, Henry Hirsch, Henry Walter Eisenberg, Clara R. Jacobs, Zelda Jaffe, Abe Jaffe, Reverend Dr. Marcus M. Jastro, Harold Joseph, Henry P. King, Irene Klieger, Tilly Cobb, Samuel Korn, Irving Krakow, Henrietta Krumholz, Arthur Lefko, Abraham Leopold, Alan Lerner, Jenny Robinson Leventon, Elizabeth Levy, Jean Levin, Louis Liebman, Cecilia Steinberg Lowenstein, Solomon Lowenstein, David Mandel Jr., David I. Martyr, Henrietta Mayer, Eugene Michelson, George Miller, Irene Moses, Hattie Newman, Eleanor Viner Neiman, Leon J. Obermeyer, Herman Obermeyer, Hyman Poland, Samuel H. Popkin, William Rosen, Edna Stern Rosenblatt, Alan Schreiber, Abe Schwartz, Sophie Selbst, David J. Sickles, Hanch Sickles, Peggy Hahn Sinrich, Joseph Sinsheimer, Harry Stanley, Dorothy Blumenthal Stein, Isaac Stein, Jacob Sternberg, Sonia Gross Stifel, Bernard Stellman, Frank Tapper, Charles H. Vendig, Arthur Viner, Louis H. Weinberger, Valentine L. Wilson Sr., Helen N. Wise, Benedict Wolf, Ruth M. Wotes, Lowell Yemen, Edith Zitwer. 
and we add the names of those who have been taken from our myths but not from our hearts in these most recent days for whom we are observing Shiloshim, the 30 days of mourning. Stanford Gross, Edward Glassman, Edwin Cutler, Eileen Parties, Thelma Rubin, Helen Shakora, William H. Simon, Joel Winnitz. If you are observing Yartzeit or Shiloshim for a loved one whose name was not mentioned, I invite you to write their names in the chat or to speak their names aloud at this time. Zichronam Livracha, may their memories be a blessing. We turn to page 122 and rise for the Mourner's Kaddish. Yit gadal v'yit gadash shimei rabah v'yamad v'varach irutei v'yamlich malchutei v'chayei chon v'yomei chon v'chayei d'chol beit Yisrael b'agala v'zman karib v'imru amen yehei shimei rabah m'varach le'alam omei omaya yit barach v'yishtabach v'yit pa'ar v'yit tramam v'yit nasei v'yit hadar v'yit hale v'yit halal shimei d'kudusha b'richu Le'ela ul'ela min kol birchata v'shirata, tush b'chata v'nechemata, da'amiran b'alma v'imru amen. Yehei shlama raba min shemaya, v'chayim aleinu v'al kol Yisrael v'imru amen. Ose shalom b'mromav, hu yaase shalom aleinu v'al kol Yisrael v'imru amen. May the source of peace bestow peace on all who mourn, and may we be a comfort, a source of comfort to all who are bereaved. And let us say, Amen. One twenty-six. Remind you to please bring your fill abundance bags with you tomorrow morning and wish you all a good yantif. Avinu malkeinu, kal 
To all of our guests, we are so glad to embrace you into our sacred community. We are proud to be able to invest in this open tent and to provide open access to all because we believe we are responsible to the greater community and to the future of the Jewish people. If you are in a position to support Congregation Rod of Shalom with a financial contribution, we would be so grateful. And we invite all who are looking to deepen your relationship with us to connect with our community. L'Shana Tova. Avinu Malkeinu Shema Koleinu Avinu Malkeinu Chatanu Lefanecha Avinu Malkeinu Avinu Malkeinu Kalei Cholzar Umasti Me'aleinu Avinu Malkeinu Avinu Malkeinu Otbeinu Besefer Chaim Tovi Avinu Malkeinu Chadei Shaleinu Chadei Shaleinu Shana Tova Oh. 